talking about, and these are in quotes. I'm, I'm quote, he called him a festering wound on the field of meteorology. These are what his colleagues, uh, it wasn't even his colleagues, this man's you know, a physicist who doesn't even really study the weather. These are what his colleagues called him, was a festering wound. And this is before we found out that this is a paranormal a paranormal guru, if you will. Uh, Michio Kuku, the, the, I said Kuku, by, um, strictly by accident or Freudian slip, I'm not sure, but Keku, um, was featured by CBS, and he promotes things like telepathy, telekinesis, mind reading, and uh, on his website, and this is all part of what some people would call magic, mentalism, uh, uh, telepathy is where you sort of communicate without using any... So what you're saying, senses. you've always said it's based on voodoo, and now they're officially <laughs> doing it. <laughs> and telekinesis is the alleged psychic ability of allowing a person to influence a physical system without physical interaction. In other, in other words... It's a fancy way of sort of a like mind-altering uh, uh, way of, of looking at things. Now, it goes on. He has a whole book on this. He's been featured. He actually went on and let Stephen Colbert make fun of him on the, the Daily Show or whatever. That, not the Daily Show, but whatever Stephen Colbert's show is. And this man, his book is called The Future of the Mind. He's claiming that feats such as photog photographing dreams, uploading memories, mentally controlled robots, uh, and telekinesis telepathy have already been achieved. And he goes further and says we're going to have a complete uh, map of the brain, and scientists are going to be to send our consciousness throughout the universe. So the point is he is not a meteorologist, and CBS knew that but never thought to mention it. No. In fact, they couldn't pick a more extreme outlier, A, on the science of global warming. His comments were just, again, deemed as, a, uh, as no effing clue by another meteorologist. And the fact that this is a um, a man into like essentially mentalism. This is a guy who who belongs on a Las Vegas stage uh, performance, not someone who should be uh, consulted as a weather expert. And this is interesting to see what CBS News does about this because they'll feature they they won't feature any skeptical scientists. And if they do, if some skeptical scientist got a two hundred dollar you know uh, fee twenty five years ago by some fossil fuel industry, they'll they'll say he's discredited and no one can talk to him. But someone else comes on and promotes uh, promotes telepathy and telekinesis, mind reading, and they're portrayed as the, uh, the esteemed expert by CBS News. By the way, it's the same network where Scott Pelley has actually on record, that the current CBS News anchor is on record when he was with 60 Minutes a few years back, 2007, I believe, saying that he would not interview any global warming skeptical scientist for the same reason he wouldn't interview anyone who is skeptical of the Holocaust. Uh, in other words, they're making direct comparisons uh, of, 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 of uh, the Holocaust and they will not interview them. So this is, this is an amazing thing uh, to see CBS promoting a mind-reading expert as a climate expert. Well, let me ask you this question. Uh, you know, I mean, we know almost all the scientists, the, the 2000 they claimed it signed on, unanimous, Al Gore said back in 2006. Uh, there's no carbon tax, no plan for that. It's unanimous Congress. All scientists agree uh, that uh, man-made global warming is, is real and that we've got to do something. And then I have the clips, it's in my film Endgame, the congressmen are like, well, wait, there are a bunch of scientists that don't agree. And he goes, no, only ones that believe we didn't land on the moon and blah, blah, blah. Well, they've got yeah. Professor Cuckoo over there. I mean, Mike, <laughs> I'm sorry, but me too, I got that confused. It's like Obama, Osama. The point is, you've got Professor Aku or whatever his name is uh, over there. If they've got all these thousands of scientists, which it turned out almost none of them had actually signed on, they had just been put on the list or, or been agreed to be sent UN material, so they were put on there fraudulently, yeah. that's a whole other controversy you've covered and Lord Moncton have covered in great detail. But if they've got all these great meteorologists and all these great planetologists, basically, who are ready to come on and say it's so real, why'd they have to get a uh, goblin chaser? And that's the question. And that's what's fascinating about this is they're, they're, what they're doing is they're pushing the new narrative. And the new narrative uh, is described by the New York Times as global weirding. And because this is relatively new in the global warming debate, it's only the last maybe year that it's really taken on a full head of steam. It's only been around a few years before that. The idea is we used to talk about unprecedented temperature rise, allegedly. And they would talk about the global temperature. The Earth has a fever, to use Al Gore's phrase. 
when that failed, and we're going on 17 plus years, actually Lord Monson has a new analysis out. It's like 17 years, five months with no global warming, and it's actually been global, slight global cooling since 2002. Alex, it's so bad that every high school kid today has never experienced global warming in their lifetime. And you can go a step further now and say that every elementary school kid has only experienced a slight global cooling in their lifetime. So when you're faced with that as a PR disaster, You've got to change the narrative. So the new narrative is every weather event, be it record cold, snow, weather, is all part of global warming. And in order to push that, you've got to get Las Vegas show acts like Professor Keiku and people who do mentalism and mind reading and all sorts of things like that. Because you're not going to find the legitimate scientists coming around yet. You will get more legitimate scientists saying, global warming scientists saying things like, well, it's consistent with and other things. But, you know, in order to push the envelope, you got to reach beyond the known world, if you catch my drift. Here. Sure. Do you, you think, Professor? Phenomena like CBS did. Do you think Professor um, Cuckoo or what's his name again? Keiku. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I can't remember. Do <laughs> you think Professor Keiku would come on and talk about the Loch Ness Monster with me? Uh, you ought to have him on. He, he seems to like the media. He, he seems to be very good humored. Again, he went on with Stephen Colbert. So he, Maybe I should get you on with him for a debate. Hold on. Stay there. When you need it the most, will your generator, power equipment, or vehicle be ready? Gas and diesel fuels go bad quickly when stored, and more than half of generator failures during disasters occur as a result of expired fuel. PRI fuel stabilizers keep your fuel fresh for when you need it most. Nuclear power stations, emergency service providers, and ships at sea rely on PRI fuel stabilizers and you can too call 888-776-9373 or visit priproducts.com to find the dealer nearest you it's time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match smokers are switching to vapriate e-liquid by lasig because when you kick ash you kick tar and smelly smoke too the sig smokes the competition with real people customer service a seven day satisfaction guarantee and same day fast free shipping become a vapor today at lasig.com spelled l-e-c-i-g.com lasig e-cigarettes kick some ash the facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple. Dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield Formula fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com. From 1946 to 1989, during the period known as the Cold War, the enemies of freedom sent teams into their own citizens' homes in order to place listening devices and cameras. They tracked the movements and personal relationships of anyone they could in order to preserve the power of the state. 25 years later, you carry a tracking beacon with you and bug your own homes with your cell phone. History is repeating itself. Tear down this wall. Go to privacycase.com today and get a privacy case. Let's protect ourselves from this high-tech iron curtain that is trying to crush our right to privacy. The American-made privacy case uses military-grade shielding technology to stop these criminals and thieves in their tracks. Go to privacycase.com today and use coupon code GCN for 10% off. Privacycase.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here back live. A final segment with Mark Moreno, and then we're working out some technical stuff for video Skype to get the lead singer of Corn on to talk about all things New World Order, Obama, and more. But here's the bottom line. There are real environmental issues and real concerns I have, but giving total power over to the kleptocrats to run everything in the name of them being saviors of the earth and buying carbon credits from Al Gore and Obama is a fraud. 
And here's an article out of Breitbart today. It's actually from AFP, French news agency. Breitbart carried it. One in four Americans unaware that Earth circles the sun in a new study conducted by the National Science Foundation. Um, and an average of 6.5 uh, got it correctly. Just 74% of respondents knew that Earth revolved around the sun. And, and, and here's the problem. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not saying Republicans are super smart on average. But compared to Democrats, it's like a, it's like a human compared to a, a rat or something. Or I guess rats are kind of smart. That's insulting to rats. Mark, in closing, the only way they can get away with this is total scientific ignorance. So now we know why they want to dumb people down. So what do you make of this one in four not knowing uh, that the Earth circles the sun? They think it's the other way around. What do we do about this? What do you expect them to do now? Because they're not stopping. They're just going forward. Uh, Obama's announced he's going to do environmental takeover without Congress. What do we do? Well, yeah, and also Obama, the, the billion-dollar slush fund they're starting today, uh, they announced today. Uh, when you mentioned you know, the education here in that poll you just cited, this, if you go into the classrooms now and you talk to the psychiatrists and everything else, the anxiety among young people about eco-fairs and eco-doom, they know more about the fear of oceans overrunning their homes than they do about whether the earth uh, rotates around the sun or not. And this is, a, um, this is the core of what's going on. They're being propagandized from a very young age with all the wrong things, be it through our Hollywood culture, through the textbooks on a lot of these politically scientific things, especially when it comes to global warming. And so now when they ask them other basic scientific questions, of course they're ignorant because their heads have no more room. They've crammed it with so much uh, junk, particularly when it comes to global warming. Today, in fact, John Holdren, uh, one of your favorites, Obama's science czar, came out and announced, quote, weather practically everywhere is being caused by climate change, unquote. In other words, every weather event that happens is now created by mankind, influenced heavily by mankind. This is what John Holden said. Interestingly enough, he was immediately, just like Professor Keiku, the, the mystic on CBS News, was essentially slammed. He's being slammed by scientists now. Uh, you know, uh, Holden claimed that global climate change is increasing droughts. Actual study from Obama administration, droughts have become shorter, less frequent, and smaller part of the U.S. over the last century. Holdren is defying his own government's science. He's giving out 100% wrong information. That's the story today. Not that school kids are getting basic science wrong, but that Obama's science advisor is failing basic science uh, of, of what he's, uh, he's uh, tasked to be an expert in, global warming. This man is failing. And, and, and on my website today, Climate Depot, Roger Pilkey Jr., does a, a professor, extreme weather expert, takes down John Holdren for just utter drivel that he's promoting today, unchallenged, by the way, in the media. By the way, Mark, I know you've got to go advise Congress and go on national TV in a minute. You've got to leave. But anybody you advise us that you think we should get on to break down the science, I'd love to have them on. But, you know, we're winning the political battle. In closing, as I said, they don't care. They're just rolling forward. What do we do? Because they use this to power grab any jurisdiction they want, saying climate's changing everywhere. Well, of course climate's changing. It's always changing. What do we do to beat them in a nutshell? Well, here's two things. First of all, had Mitt Romney won, Mitt Romney, if you've noticed, people would say, well, vote, uh, you know, vote a new president in. Well, Mitt Romney had just came out about a week ago and announced that he's back on the global warming bandwagon. Remember when he ran, he was a global warming believer. Then he got all the pressure. Then he backed down. Well, now he's back that he doesn't have the pressure for office. So Republicans aren't the answer. And Mitt Romney actually said that he would not have stopped Obama's EPA from doing what Obama's about to do. So I don't know that the Republican Party is capable. The biggest thing we have to do is try to get the GOP Congress to defund the EPA. Because President Obama, as the old expression goes, doesn't need no stinking... That's right. Great job, Mark Moreno. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. This is Next hour coming up, folks. I'll finish up with some topics on solutions as well. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. 
bottom line iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.